Hi, it's Dr. Morris from Magnolia Medical Center. Uh, I told you last night at our Facebook Live video that we were going to talk about something called normal adaptive physiology. So the, the title on this video is, is your body working correctly or incorrectly? How do you know whether your body's working properly? The problem that I have is that most doctors have forgotten what normal bodily function is. They go on, uh, they go on a hunt, if you will, based on symptoms, based on the complaints that you have, and then they look for things to determine what's wrong. And oftentimes what they see is wrong is actually what is right. Okay, so I'm going to give you a scenario here, okay? So uh, we're in Tennessee, uh, and I don't know our, um, you know, forgive me, I'm a, another geography thing here. I don't know what our sea level is, how far above Tennessee, how far above sea level Tennessee is where we are. But let's say it's 500 feet above sea level, okay, here in Tennessee, all right? Now, if today I take my blood, and as an example, I look and I look for my red blood cell count, all right, how many red blood cells I have in my blood, okay? So if I do that in my blood work today, and then I fly to Denver, okay, I go from Tennessee to Denver. Now the important thing about that is Denver is the mile high city, okay? So that's 5,280 feet above sea level, a big difference. Now the interesting thing about that is the oxygen concentration at Denver is way less than it is in Tennessee. So if I speak in Denver, and then I come back to Tennessee and I get my blood checked again, my red blood cell count should be elevated. It should be up, all right? So if my doctor checks that at that time and he sees my red blood cell count is up, he's gonna see I'm anemic. Now you can be anemic in a low red blood cell count or anemic in a high blood cell, red blood cell count, but he would say that I'm anemic without knowing that I just spent two weeks in Denver. He might not even know to ask that question, might not even cross his mind to ask that question because he's so focused on that number and to him that number means something is wrong. It's outside of the range. When in all reality, my body made more red blood cells it was doing something right. It wasn't doing something wrong. It made more red blood cells because the oxygen count was lower and it needed to have a better way of getting oxygen to my brain so my body kept functioning, my nervous system kept functioning. So this is an example of normal adaptive physiology, okay? So you just have to understand, you have to be a good advocate. You have to look and say, well, when is my body working right? Is it working incorrectly? Now, this came up yesterday because we're talking about this COVID-19 thing, right? I've been talking about this a lot. And one of the symptoms, now, since you were little, this is a symptom that has come up throughout your life, and most people in your life have told you something's wrong. Fever, all right? Is a fever something wrong? Now, if a fever spikes and it gets too high too quickly, it can actually be a problem, okay? But most of the time, that's not, the, that's not what's happening. Most of the time is our body is slowly increasing the temperature, and the reason it's doing that is because our immune system gets kicked in. Many parts of our immune system work better, stronger, um, when the temperature's up, plus viruses, okay, and certain bacteria do not live as well when the temperature's up. Specifically, we've talked about this recently, is the viral envelope around COVID-19, when it gets to be 130, I think it's 133, 136 degrees, um, that viral envelope starts to break down, which means your immune system can fight it off more. So would the fever be something wrong or would it be something that's right? All right, it would be something that your body is doing correctly. We don't wanna stop that fever. Certainly it doesn't feel good. Everybody says, oh, you got a fever, take Tylenol, lower the fever. I'm not giving you advice over the internet. You gotta raise your right hand. I am not giving you medical advice over the internet. I just want you to understand that most of the time when we see something wrong in blood work or we see something that's going wrong in the body, it's actually your body trying to fix something. It's actually something correct. Let's use something else that everybody's really, really, really accustomed to, high blood pressure, all right? Is that something wrong? Maybe, maybe not. Maybe it's something right, okay? So most people don't know this, but you have a blood vessel, all right, an artery specifically. 
and you have that little tube that things go through. Well, the blood vessel itself in an artery is a muscular wall. It's made of muscles, okay? The outer layer of it. And you have a little nerve that comes to it, and that nerve can tell that muscle to contract or expand, right? Which would mean that that hole is gonna open up or close down. Well, if the nerve tells this muscle to contract, then the blood pressure is gonna increase. Well, why would your brain tell those muscles to contract? Well, what if you're having trouble getting blood flow to your feet or from your feet back up to your heart so that your heart could then pump it to your brain? We need to increase the pressure inside the vessels so that your heart can keep things pumping throughout every tissue of your body. So high blood pressure could be, and in many cases, and I'm not telling you not to take your high blood pressure medication, that's not what I'm saying, but I just want you to understand high blood pressure is actually in many cases adaptive physiology. It's your body trying to do something correct. It, now, the unfortunate thing is that means your body's trying to solve another problem. I just want you to understand that that's not the problem, okay? It's trying to solve another problem. It's trying to do something correct. It's trying to keep your body doing something right. Doctor comes along and gives you a prescription to lower your blood pressure. And what it's do, what that ha what happens then, what happened, uh, what happens then is your body then has to say, wait a second, we were doing something to fix this issue, okay? Now what happens? The issue that it was trying to solve now becomes a bigger problem, right? So again, that doesn't mean don't take your blood pressure medication. I just want you to give an example, another example of adaptive physiology. We can talk about all kinds of different things. Um, high cholesterol. Well, why? Uh, so another issue, this is a great thing, right? Okay, so cholesterol, uh, somewhere around 80% of all of the cholesterol that's measured in your bloodstream is actually produced, all right, in your body. It's made in your liver, okay, most of it. So if you have high cholesterol and 80% of it's produced by your body, wouldn't you wanna ask, why does my body feel like it has to produce so much cholesterol? What problem is that trying to solve? Is that adaptive physiology? or is there actually something wrong? Sometimes there are things wrong. Some people can have a familial hypocholesterolemia, which means uh, a genetic issue that makes their body produce too much cholesterol. But in many cases, and we see this all the time, is their body is actually producing cholesterol for sometimes the main two things are two different reasons. A decrease in hormone production, okay? So it tries to make more cholesterol because most of your hormones are made from cholesterol, all right? You need cholesterol in order to make all of your steroid-based hormones. So if you have low hormones, your body can make more cholesterol to try to help produce more hormones. When you're under stress, we use up a lot of, these, of the cholesterol uh, to make hormones, and we use it uh, to make your sex hormones. We end up using a lot of that cholesterol to make your stress hormones, like, um, um, now I'm drawing a blank, like your adrenal stress hormones, like cortisol and cortisone. And also your nerves, your brain and all of your nerves are covered in cholesterol. Uh, the covering around your nerves is called myelin and myelin is made from cholesterol. So you need cholesterol. As a matter of fact, it's a big problem for you to have too little cholesterol. It's a huge problem for you to have too little cholesterol. Although most doctors are low cholesterol, they're only gonna look at high, but it's a huge issue for your brain and your hormone production if you have too little cholesterol. So your body's production of cholesterol, another example of something that could be normal adaptive physiology. So don't, uh, the thing that you should know is you need to be a good health advocate for yourself, okay? By the way, uh, Karen's behind the camera there, she's telling me I should give you some, th get you to give me some thumbs up, like give me those little thumbs up, those little hearts there, all right? And don't forget to share this. I usually ask that right at the end, but if you've jumped off or you're gonna jump off, you gotta hit that share button before you do it. Don't jump off without hitting that share button. Um, but you've gotta be a good health advocate. You've got to know that you've gotta ask some questions. And some of the questions you should ask, although your doctor might get mad at you for asking them, is doc, is this, a, uh, is this my body trying to fix something? And by addressing this problem that is actually a solution, are we going to create other issues? A good, another, again, another example would be uh, uh, the same example going back to blood pressure. You have high blood pressure. The thing that you should be solving is what's causing your body to create high blood pressure, 
not just lowering your blood pressure, all right? So if you found this helpful, again, the thumbs up, the little hearts, you can hit that little button, give me little hearts, and share this. Um, you know, people need information. They've got to be better health advocates for themselves. Um, it, it, just think of how much cholesterol medication and how many, how many prescriptions for blood pressure that have been produced, how many billions and billions of dollars the pharmaceutical industry has made because people are ignorant not stupid there's a difference between stupid and ignorant all right um are ignorant about uh things about adaptive physiology and when i see people are ignorant ignorant about it i want you to know your doctor has forgotten this all right the vast majority of them have totally forgotten this concept that your body is constantly trying to adapt and solve problems that it's experiencing in the environment. If your doctor's forgotten it, how are they even going to know to teach it to you? And doctor is from the word that means teacher. All right, so it should be the doctor's job to teach you how to stay healthy, not just to give you some cholesterol lowering medication or blood pressure lowering medication. So I'm going to sign off. We're going to keep this a little bit short. Actually, it's probably not short. I've been talking and talking and talking. Um, but I hope you found this helpful. Hit that share button. Uh, and um, I don't know what we're going to talk about tomorrow. I, I think, you know, we just saw, I just saw something today about pollen levels in the southeast right now are like the highest record high right now. Not record, record for the year. And we should probably talk about pollen and histamine and allergies, especially since that people are going to get sinus stuff. They're going to get coughing. They're going to get watery eyes and they're thinking they're going to run to the hospital. Uh, think about that. Are those things adaptive physiology? Are your allergies, are they an adaptive thing? That means something's wrong. Could be either, but wouldn't you want to know? And if you could enhance your own body's adaptive physiology, maybe you don't have to run and get the, the allergy medications and things like that just to keep your eyes from watering and uh, keep you from sneezing and hacking and running off to get a COVID-19 test when that isn't even remotely the problem. Anyway, hope you found this helpful. I will see you next time.